uh, tonight we are going uh, to be talking about maximizing your return on your investments. We're going to have a guest speaker, Eleanor Sheldon. Uh, she's going to be talking about this very thing. She is our whiz or a whiz at this, and she's also a whiz at statistics. So she's going to share some of that with you tonight. Before we begin, I just want to let you know that we are going to be, Dr. Shell and I are going to be in Salt Lake City next Friday, the 27th. Uh, we are going to be speaking for the uh, Intermountain Society of Herodonist. It's going to be an all-day lecture. Uh, we're going to be speaking in the afternoon. Uh, George Duello is also going to be speaking there on implants. So if you are interested, you can give us an email, give us a call, um, and we can see about getting you there, getting you in there. Um, so yeah, well, let us know about that. Also, we do have two events that are coming up. Uh, we're start As we said before, we are starting... Um, a tour this year, the first time that we're doing this. The first two stops that we're doing are going to be in Chicago first. Chicago is going to be June 8th and 9th. Uh, and then uh, Saddlebrook, New Jersey is going to be June 22nd and 23rd. Some of you may have seen that brochure come through email. Um, if you're near those areas, you would have received that. Um, if not, you can see it on our website. Um, Find it there. You can also, again, email us for information because if you're not in the area, but you know somebody in the area, some periodontist friends in the area, invite them. Uh, this is a two-day event. It's for you. It's for your staff. Um, so uh, let everybody know. Uh, they can come see us. Um, we may be in your area soon. Um, we haven't yet released all the dates, have we? No. Well, we kind of know them, but we're not telling anybody. <laughs> 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 but by the end of the year, we'll be doing three more. Okay. Yes. And so we're very excited about these. It's going to be two packed days. And like I said, bring your staff with you because it's going to be something for everyone to take back with them, things that you can implement right away. Um, so that is uh, what we have coming up. And we select the cities. We know they're going to be, it's going to be LA or the Southern California area. We know we're going to be in Dallas and we're going to, we'll be in Atlanta. So those are the three other um, things. Right. Uh, and a uh, big program, a big program with uh, lots of good speakers um, who will, help you grow your specialty practice. That's what they do. And that's what this, uh, the, the people we selected, as you probably know, um, are people who are, helped us grow our specialty practice. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hear the message from the people who've actually helped us do what we do. Right. So like I said, we're, we're very excited about this. Um, it's going to be a pretty packed in two days. So if we're not coming near your area, uh, we can um, guarantee you'll be worth the travel on it. Yeah. So today we have as our guest, and I know we've already introduced her, my wife, Dr. Eleanor Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> she is the doctor of statistics. <laughs> and so we're going to talk a little bit about what goes on with, um, with our magazine. And uh, I don't know why I'm doing that, but uh, yeah, new technology. Look at what happens to me. So... Essentially, we've talked about this before. We understand, and you understand, the magazine is the main way that we market. You may not market with the magazine, but you may have other ways of marketing or things that you're um, presuming. And while Danielle and I have talked about marketing and how important marketing is and how effective it is and how it brings in patients that would ordinarily not see you, we also have to make sure that we're marketing to the right place and we're getting the correct return on investment. And frankly, it's the behind the scenes work that Eleanor does that allows us to do what we do up front and allows you to see the success that we've had. So um, with that, we want to go over the specifics of how we market directly to the public using the magazine. Last time we talked about the magazine itself and how effective it is, but how do we get the magazine to the right people? How do we make sure that um, we um, are marketing to the people who are going to be most likely to come in. And so we're gonna talk about that process today and try to make it, well not try to make it, we will make it as clear to you as possible. Once you see it, we'll talk about um, um, other ways in which we would use it, but let's start first by um, how we get a patient into the office. So um, all of you had ref or have referral practices, or nearly every one of you here has referral practices, and so did we. Um, and, and you're going to continue to have referral practices for the near foreseeable future. But those, that, that information you're getting from those patients can be valuable for you to determine how you're then going to market. 
And one of the things we need to do is to look at marketing by zip code and how do we know which zip codes are producing and which ones aren't. And that's where statistics and compiling statistics and tracking statistics is really, really important. So um, let's go into that. And what we want to do is to, to actually market to the best income area. So you might be working with 10 different zip codes. If you, you go and you compile the statistics from each zip, zip code, either using the computer software or even doing it manually for the past two or three months, you'll start to have a feeling as to which zip codes are higher producing, which are lower producing, which produce more patients and produce more income. And of course, that's the way we want to at least start our marketing exercise because we want to market to those zip codes or to those areas that are most likely to produce. So what do you think? Have I, have I, have I introduced it well? You're doing yes, pretty you good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to add to that? No? Well, one, one thing yeah. is that you may get a lot of people from one zip code, but maybe you don't have to get a lot of income. So it's important to look at the patients who pay also and make sure that it's just not the, a lot of numbers coming in of people, but that actually that they're paying for treatment. Good point. Yeah. And we found that in our stats before. We have found that one marketing action that we were doing was bringing in a ton of patients, but none of them were paying any money. So we were spending all that time and all that chair time seeing the patients and they didn't produce any income. So yeah, that's a good point. I agree. So let's go on to the next step. So we review our own income and this, this is the important first step. And is it tedious? Is it tedious? What does it take? I mean, we, we are just switching over from DSN to Dentrix. And so when we're in, we're still getting used to Dentrix. So I'm not sure we have everything, but let's talk about what you had to do with DSM because that's what, that's how you first compiled these statistics when we first started marketing. So how difficult was it you to figure out what zip code was producing what and, and decide where we would start? You basically have to do it manually. I could never find a way to get the computer software to duplicate what I wanted in statistics. Yeah. So you, you track income by who's paying or the number of patients coming in or whatever you want to track and, and you either figure out how to do it by your software or you do it by hand. Okay, but it's a critical first step and we've had two software so far, Dentrix, so far we don't have a way of doing it automatically, either you're still doing it by hand. Yep. Okay, all right, good. So then the next point is, all right, so now we know that part of it. Now let's talk about exactly how we get the magazine to that zip code. So I will play with this for a second and just get us to a new share. Okay, so here we are at the United States Post Office, USPS.com site. So go ahead, Eleanor, tell us what we do. So you sign up with them and you get an account Oh, well, let's start from scratch here. All uh, right, so we'll go, go, yeah, we'll do it again. So essentially, we're using the United States Post Office site because the USPS site has some good basic demographic information. Yeah, the post office has some decent demographic information. I know you can't believe it, but it is, and that's what we're using, um, using the service called Every Door Direct Mail that is that 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 um, allows us to see um, mail routes by zip code. So we're there, right? Okay, right. So here we are on the main page. So we just put in whatever zip code we're looking for, and I'm going to, to yeah, I'm going to use Merritt Island, which is a good producing zip code for us. Don't give away our secrets. It's not too close to us. No. Yeah, this is, remember we talked about a couple of weeks ago, we talked about we're marketing to an area that's 15 miles away. That's Merritt Island. Yeah, we're okay. Merritt down. Island is far away here. Can they see this? Yeah, screen? they can see that. Okay, so we're down here. Yeah. And this is, the gray area is Merritt Island. So they've got to go over a bridge. They've got to go up that narrow, that, that narrow piece of land in order to get to us. And they're getting to us and they've been doing this for what? Two, three years, four years, four something years. like that, yeah. 
they, by the way, didn't come to us before, yeah. <laughs> but they have right. since we start, started marketing them. So this gray area is all the 32952. So now we have to decide we, where are we going to deliver our magazines uh, next week. So we go to the table. This is the name of the root here, the, the first column. The second column is the number of houses or businesses on that route. And then the other column I pay attention to is the income level of the household here. Wow. So this, is a, this goes from 30 some odd thousand income all the way up to 120,000. I think that's the highest one. So now the question is, which ones are we going to pick? So we found that the lowest ones aren't that good and the highest ones aren't necessarily that good either. So we kind of concentrate on the middle ones. Anywhere from- What's middle, yeah. Middle is 50s, 60s, 70s okay. of income. In our area, by the in way, in your area. area, it may be higher. You know, it, 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 we were working with um, someone from a, a much larger city and 70 was the minimum route there. So uh, again, we want to look for the middle, whatever the middle income route is for you and you work from the middle and out. And by the way, we do go to the top every once in a while, but the middle is where we've done the best. So I'm, we're gonna target about 1,500 um, households next week. So we'll pick a couple of routes. Uh, let's take that one and uh, that's now notice on that one notice in the first column we got three two nine five two c zero zero eight and then next to that is the number 699 that 699 is the number of businesses or uh, households plus businesses in that particular area so that means that's right. the number of magazines that we're going to be delivering by every door direct mail on that particular mail route that's where that postman goes and those are the number of places no, number of um, uh, places that he goes uh, in, in his mail room. And then I think I'll pick uh, this one. And that one has um, 759 houses or stores. So that's going to be a total of 1464, which is about 1500, which is what our target was going to be. Now, if you want to see where they are on the map, The two ones that we picked are blue here. Oh. And the, the one that I picked, the first one, C008, is this one. And then C029 is this one. So these are the two routes that are going to be delivered to. And you can enlarge those to see the neighborhood. I mean, if you want to see the streets, you know, just scroll in. And you can see the exact streets you're in. Oh, Particularly, wow. you know, if you know, know the neighborhood, you want to know a little bit more, scroll in until you see the name of the streets, and you can. And so you'll get a, b a better idea as to where you're going, because some of you know that certain neighborhoods produce better. Well, you may want to just choose the neighborhood, because you know it pr produces, rather than go through these steps. Okay. And then uh, we can continue. We can pick a date that we want to deliver to. Let's say I want to do it next Thursday, the 26th. And then it's just a matter of clicking through. And I usually, I always pay online. Or if I don't feel like doing it right now, I can save it and come back later and then continue. What do you do after that? Do you deliver the magazines? What this does is it brings me to a page where you print out one sheet for every 100 magazines and then you bundle them up in, in groups of 100, putting one sheet on top of each bundle. Okay. And then you just box them up and bring them to the post office on the 26th. All right, so wait a minute, but that's an even number. So let's assume it's 749 or something like that. Then you bundle the last 149. Right, okay. or some, if it's less than 50, you go 149. If it's 75, you just do the 75 by sure. themselves. Okay. So the closest to 50. Okay. Now, for those of you who are working with a magazine and you're working with Gilead already, Gilead is doing this for you. Gilead is selecting the mail routes for you, is bundling them the same way that we do when, because we do it ourselves. We do the distribution ourselves. But for the vast majority, Gilead is doing, doing that for you. The important part of that is this. You know your neighborhoods 
better than the Gilead people do. They're in Irvine, California. You're, in, you're someplace else. And therefore, you may be able to assist them by picking routes that would produce better. And, and so you can go to the USPS site and you can talk with Robin and say, Robin, based on what, what Eleanor talks about, I think I want to go to the middle and here are the neighborhoods that I'd like to target. And then Robin will do the rest of the work for you. If you're working with some other um, direct mail house, it's the same thing. If you're going to use this, this, this particular uh, category called every door direct mail, which means that every, as I said, every uh, household and every business, or by the way, you can choose not to market the business as well, but every household on that route is going to receive that. That means you're going to, uh, you're, that, that, that mailman, every, uh, or that postman will go and deliver it to every single house on the route. You don't have to address it. You don't have to buy mailing lists. You don't have to do any of that. It's going to go to every house on the route. So we, we use Gilliard. Yeah. But Eleanor still does this. So you said Gilliard does it for you, but we're still choosing to do this. Is it because Eleanor is looking at it more with a, a bigger magnifying glass to stat out where they have gone, what they bring in, and then we choose to keep hitting those areas that are better? I think so. I mean, uh, the the... Not everybody has an Eleanor, and we want everybody to have an Eleanor. I mean, we want everybody to have a Danielle, um, and we want to grow to that because it's important that we keep track of statistics. We don't want to waste money, and we want to make sure, and this is statistics. This is the planning that we do every right. week. It's based on Eleanor stats, and so we want to carefully do that, but let's assume that you're not ready for that step, and by the way, Eleanor bundles magazines, and that was the way when we started with Gilead. That's what, the way we did it. It was incumbent upon the person who bought the magazine right. to actually distribute the magazine. Gilead discovered that they didn't have, that a lot of offices didn't have an Eleanor. Okay. And so therefore they said, we'll find our own way of distributing it because a lot of people were buying the magazines and then keeping the magazines because it was too much of a pain in the neck or too much of a, right. of a routine, whatever you want to call it, to deliver the magazines the way we do. And so they, there are dis, dis, distribution agencies that do it for you. And so Gilead contracts the, with the distribution agency right. in your local neighborhood or your, your, your local, you know, your town, city, uh, county, wherever it is, in order to make sure that distribution is done um, um, for you. Okay. Still, you can assist in the distribution by saying, right. hey, I want stop stop with these high income routes. And we were working with somebody, um, with one of our members, who was marketing to high income routes and he wasn't producing anything. And so then we talked to him and we went over every door direct mail for his particular city. It was a large city. And we said, no, you're going here, go to the middle. And he went to the middle and so tweaked it, worked with Robin at Gilead, and now the magazine is produced. We just got an email from him today. Great. Magazine's producing well. Well, how much time do you spend on this a week? The, the actual, um, I pick out all the routes ahead of time. So I spend a lot of time setting it all up. Okay. And then I have a, a graph that shows me where I'm going every week. So it doesn't take very long every week, About a couple of hours. A couple and then weeks. now I don't bundle anymore. We hired a, a high school girl right. that bundles. And then I have a friend of mine who delivers. Right. So I And she just does that. I know Ashley does, does it a few hours a week and she yeah. does other things in the office, you know, scanning and It takes stuff. her about an hour a week. To so it takes them. you a few hours. It takes her an hour. So about three hours a week it takes to do this yourself. And yeah. the, the delivery is a couple hours. Okay. okay. So, uh, so essentially, the, looking at the statistics and determining the mail routes, you can do that. We just did it for you. We just did it for right, ourselves. Right. That you can do in five or ten minutes. And if you don't want to do the five hours of all of the delivery, that's what Gilead will do for you. Right. And, and they, they, they charge for it, of course, but they charge a reasonable rate in order to be able to you know, make sure that the mask magazine is distributed. Or well, make sure it's distributed. And of course, we distribute how many magazines we distribute now per week? About forty six hundred a week. Okay, yeah, that's how effective it was for us. Well, we started around fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint and let's uh, look at um, that for a moment. Okay, so now the person has come in. Or the person is called. Yes. Now, Danielle, what are you asking with regard to uh, how we find out how the patient was referred to the office? Well, anybody who has seen our past webinars or lectures knows how we do our new patient uh, phone call sequence. 
And the one thing that we're big on is no airtime, use transitions in order to get the patient to schedule. So one of our first, I would say one of our first three transitions would be, so how did you hear about our office? Um, as we're looking for the appointment time and, and putting the information in, and that's where they share with us how they've heard. I, and most of it is, I received this magazine in the mail. Yep. So with our referred by section that you see on the screen, uh, Eleanor has created uh, many drop downs. So we can, it, it's either website, internet, Google, it's, um, they saw our sign, whatever it is, because when she does her statistics, it's not just on magazines, it's all of our, um, all of our referred sources so we know where to invest our money into. Good. So now front desk has written that down. Okay. Correct. And now the patient is, has come in for treatment. Right. Now patient has come in for treatment. There's something called the day sheet. The reason it's called the day sheet is because it tells you, I know I'm not being demeaning. I'm really not, but uh, we know that, um, a day sheet needs to be re reviewed daily. Okay, that is a fundamental. It's reviewed every day. Why? Because we can glean information every single day and we can stay current with our statistics and therefore we can make some decisions based on what we're seeing today, tomorrow, yesterday. And we can make some, make, make some decisions, compile that data in order to be able to make, make uh, decisions correctly. So let's talk about reviewing the day sheet daily. Okay, so this is what I would get at the end of the day, and it's got a printout of all the collection and the patient's name, and I take the sheet and I look at all the non-preventive um, maintenance appointments, anybody who's paid for treatment, and I write down where they came from, um, what their zip code was, and I also keep track of a few other, other things, but this for this lecture, um, this is what the important thing is, is where they came from and what their zip code was. So David at the top was a magazine patient and he was 32901. And then Carolyn was from the lecture, 32934. And then Deborah Kay was magazine patient and she was 32931. So they all paid for treatment, and this is where they came from. And then I put it on another spreadsheet, um, the zip codes that they came from, and I sort it by zip code. All right, good. And that's what this is. So actually, this is just the Merritt Island that we just looked at on Every Door Direct Mail. So these are the patients from Merritt Island on a certain date and how much they paid for treatment, and I have it sorted by, by zip code. So now you can see what was produced here, 2795, 40,000, 5,000, 5,035, 7,000, 2580, all in this particular zip code. And when you compile that over a period of, and you can see this is a number of weeks, actually months, we can see how much income came from this particular zip code by magazine sent in the mail. So it's a magazine sent by every door direct mail. That helps us determine um, how effective that particular marketing exercise was. And we compare that to other zip codes. And so now we have data comparison of 32952 versus 32935, for example. And we can decide where we want to spend more marketing dollars because now we've compiled all of the data associated with each income source by, um, uh, by date and by zip code. Yeah, I, I explain it correctly? Yeah. I never knew this stuff. <laughs> and I think that's it, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, it's, I know. I know statistics are boring. I don't do it. But if Eleanor didn't do it, I would be flying by the seat of my pants. I really would. And when you're dealing in large numbers, um, and that's both large numbers of patients, large numbers of income, and frankly, large numbers of staff in order to be able to work through that, um, we want to make sure we're not wasting money. And you know, no, not every magazine is going to produce a new patient. What we're trying to do is to make sure the concentration magazines go to the areas that do produce um, the best patients. And we know that, and when, particularly when we're compiling data over a longer period of time, we start to be able to fine tune that even better. And so even though we're delivering our own magazines, 
and I'm not suggesting you do so, when we're communicating with Robin every month, we say, this produced, this didn't, and we start to get a feeling. Um, and there is somebody good with numbers, either in your practice or home, somebody you know who really likes to do this stuff. Eleanor likes to do it. And you find that person, and then that person can help you with your analysis. You can make appropriate decisions. You do like to do it, right? Yeah, I like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand why, but she does. <laughs> so uh, this is how we'll use our statistics both for, for the magazine, but as I said, any marketing thing. But it's also a discipline that you get into so you can make other decisions, planning decisions. So if you find that your income is dropping, you know it within the first two or three weeks, not waiting for the accountant statement at the end of the year, but find out in two or three weeks, hey, things are dropping. We've got to do something to tweak that. What are we going to do? Well, you know, we found out 32952 produces more patients. Let's send more magazines after 32952 next week. It may be that kind of a decision. Um, and if we are making that decision, decision by statistics, we can do that much better. Yeah. Sounds good. Does yeah. anything else? No. Yeah. Do I do it? You did it. Right. You did very good. Anybody else have anything to say? Thank you, Eleanor. You did <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor. You're doing fantastic. <laughs> okay, so we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Hopefully, we'll see you in Salt Lake City. We'll see you around. It. Send us some emails and, um, you know, if you have some questions, just let us know. Thanks for joining us again today. Have a good night.